you go on a journey of hope, just getting pregnant, then someone says, well, you're not on that journey, you're on a different journey, and all you read is that it's sorrowful and burdensome and you don't work and someone will have to take care of them. And I'm thinking, I helped take care of my parents and now Maddie will have to take care of this baby. We'd gone away for the weekend and it was a glorious weekend. And I remember thinking, God, I cannot believe that you were so good that I would have a precious husband, an amazing little boy, and I'm pregnant again and I've made it this far. But I had had a sinus infection, so I thought I would call and ask if I could take some sinus medicine. Mrs. Lidekin, he's been waiting for you. And on the phone, he said, um, I'm really sorry. The news came back and your baby has Down syndrome. Don't worry, we can take care of this. I hung up and literally fell to the ground with my big belly, just to the ground, just sobbing and sobbing. And all I could say was, my baby has Down syndrome. My baby has Down syndrome. I thought um, children with Down syndrome were kind of bumps on a log because that's what I experienced seeing people with Down syndrome. I, I just felt like he wasn't gonna learn, he wasn't gonna achieve very much. But I really struggled trying to think of what it would be for her sister. And it made me so sad. And I just started sobbing. And my husband's like, why are you crying? I said, because I wanted to have a son for you to work on old cars with and do plumbing with. He says to me, who says he won't? We just, literally we were broken. We were on our knees. We just didn't know what we would do. There was this little book that I found. I read one sentence that I thought was our answer as a family. And I handed him the book and I said, see if this is an answer for us. At the end of the time he read it and he said, is it that you can only drink the cup of sorrow if you drink it in community? I said, yes, that's the sentence. He said, well, we've formed a lot of community, but I don't know if we have this kind of community. And I think the very next day, I just said, okay, let's do this. We look on the internet, I try and read books, I go to some groups, I find a lot of information on the internet about inclusion and Down syndrome. And then along the way, I would meet these amazing women. And when I called Nancy, I, I remember it so vividly. I need to know how to get her everything she needs. And I am under the impression that you know the words and the language to help me open those doors. Both my parents are deaf. And it was in a time when there weren't phone calls or phones and things, interpreters even to use. And I'm an only child. Sign language is my first language. They signed to me at home. They said, good morning. And it's just like you learn any other language. So my entire house and my life was that I was kind of the bridge builder between them and the hearing world. Nancy Lidekin telling us that sign language is a good thing. With sign language, and I'm talking early on, these kids can be months old giving you a sign. That is bigger than just a sign. It means all things are possible to me. You're connecting. It's like the Helen Keller moment, right? It's like, I've got you, you've got me. All of us had struggles with our kids' health or different kinds of things. The word suffering, burden, was never in our conversation. We're parents of kids that have some extra needs. I was so moved and touched by the deep love and the belief in possibilities and so saddened that all of us experienced such low expectations of our kids. 
So we said, let's meet. Let's meet every week. So every week for two years at my kitchen table, we just pulled every resource we had and we began to fly around the United States and see what was out there. Whatever happens has to be for the greater good of all individuals with Down syndrome. A lot of us said we wanted our children to read. We had this bright idea that we would have a reading conference. Maybe we should see if anybody else is, would have any interest. We throw this conference, hoping somebody would sign up, and it was maxed out at 215. The evaluations and what people said was, I need a place to go. And I think it was time for action. We were ready to do something besides just feel cozy with our tea mugs in a room. And we began to really get clear that we were just about education with the end goal of an independent life, employment, and choice. And then on March 21st of 2009, we opened our doors at Club 21. We kind of put our dreams out there. Oh, oh you just smiling at your daddy? Are you smiling at your daddy? Has she melted your heart? Like you're just, you're a puddle. She's gonna be great. Okay. You need to have community. And if you, don't, if you have education but you don't have one, it's really wondrous. And if you have community and you don't have education, then you're kind of floundering. You don't really know what to do. So that's why we just encourage families to come. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> well, thank you. Congratulations. So thank you so much. All will be well. All will be well. Really nice. Thank you. Right. Take care. How are you, and what do you say, Luca? Perfect. <laughs> Try this. The world thinks, oh, maybe if you have a high functioning, quote, high functioning kid with Down syndrome, maybe they'll read. What's their learning profile? The research shows that they're visual learners. So you put a picture, sign language, the word dog, the impairment is on the short term memory. So it means to get something like the word dog into long-term memory, you gotta repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. If you can read, you have an open door, which is like the keys to the kingdom. Like if you're gonna cook, I mean, we don't always take the time to assemble, but isn't that how it works best? So you assemble your stuff and then you, um, go through the steps, and for a lot of kids, I mean, this is great fine motor for that, That's a fun yeah. idea. I can't, I never thought of this. I mean, it's so basic. Basic, right? That's but, what we forget but, yeah. about, I think, is the basic stuff. Overthink things. He would just read something and just put words in there that would be the easiest for him mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. And like, but, but now I'm like, like, no, like, keep doing it. And he's actually reading, like, everything perfectly. And so, and I'm like, oh, it's good to know that he can do that. And at that point, he'll correct himself, too, which is really exciting. Yeah. But now I want him to read books because I know he can. And he so it goes, started in Broadway, then went to Hollywood. <gasps> What's number two? What's number two? You can find the title of the book where? Oh, my Lord. What's the title? Look at this. Look at this. Whoa. What's the title of the book, oh, love? Faster. Well, in this course. Encyclopedia. <laughs> Starting with A. <laughs> That's my favorite. I saw a YouTube. I love it. Did I score? Wow. Did you know that the boys, Kathy Bates, was um, Miss Hennigan? Kathy Bates was Miss Hennigan. I can't believe you know that. Find a hint. I found it. I knew that breast milk was the best thing to build his brain. Oh my gosh, I remember one doctor's appointment, the doctor asked what kind of um, formula we gave him. And Fred says, we don't use the F word in our house. <laughs> the kids just gravitated toward Tim. He was in a tennis camp and everybody wanted to be his buddy at this tennis camp. And so there he is holding court. You know, we went to amusement parks, and he loved the girls, as you can see. He's gazing at her adoringly. <laughs> that morning that Tim didn't wake up, my mom had just died three weeks before. 
and we had buried her on Monday, and he didn't wake up on a Friday. And Fridays was the day that I would go to Club 21 and be a facilitator for the First Steps group, Bertha Age 3. Those moms that usually went to Club 21 drove up here, they sat on my sofa, they cried with us, and they just, they were just present. So that was a community that I couldn't lose. I mean, I'd already lost my mom, I lost my son. I couldn't lose this community that was so much a part of my life by now. Yeah, that's why I keep coming back. So for me, it gave me a lot of peace to know these are people living their life in a very similar fashion. So whatever that initial shock and sadness, it was quickly replaced by community of people living it, doing it, and thriving, not just surviving, like thriving. This organization started as an idea, and it started because there was nobody there helping teachers teach our kids. There was nobody that told the research on Down syndrome to families. One night, I just gathered people that I'd seen in therapy, and I said, I, I, said, I don't know what I'm doing, but we've got to do something. It wasn't doom and gloom. Nancy gave me hope, too. She was forging a path for us, and uh, as so many other mothers before us have done. <laughs>